Hello, New Hope. Hello, welcome to our New Hope 21st year anniversary. Amen. You're excited? I'd like to request everyone to please stand and open your Bibles if you have it or in your iPhone, uh, Psalm 138. You read the verse one and you read the uh, second verse and so on and so forth. This is the David's thanksgiving for the Lord's favor. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing praises to you before the gods. On the day I called, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. And they will sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the Lord of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord tonight because He's been faithful and we're thankful for His goodness and mercy for being faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see thank you Lord thank Grateful heart, what a song of praise, what an extra charm. I bless your name and thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. All you've done in my life. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched time, I bless your name and thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, song of praise when an ask for time I bless your name and thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord oh thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord thank you Lord I just want to thank you Lord so thank you, Lord, I 
just want to thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. One more time. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Oh, we thank the Lord Jesus for your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why we celebrate, Lord Jesus, tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his wonderful name. this wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of Turning with thee, thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. How 
Hallelujah. 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 Our worthy Lord Jesus to be praised. Praise his wonderful name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the 21st, for the years that you have with us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You never leave us nor forsake us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness, for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the new normal now. Just wave. Wave, wave, wave one with another before you take your seats tonight. Amen.
those of you who are here, good evening. And those of you who are watching by uh, streaming, good evening as well to each and every one of you. This morning, uh, yeah, this morning, when I woke up, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have a confused uh, time, time situation because there are times we have service in the morning, there are times we have service in the evening, and so sometimes we get confused. But this morning, when I woke up uh, and I read uh, the, uh, the Bible verse for uh, this day, it's Psalm 107, verse 1, and it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Hallelujah. You know, and, and, and as, as I was meditating upon that verse, and even the police cars are celebrating with us today. Hallelujah. They're thanking the Lord that uh, we, have, we have some of the, the bad guys here already. They're converted, right? They're not out there anymore. Well, we're celebrating 21 years of God's faithfulness to the church today. Amen. Um, and just by you know, I'm just I'm just interested to to find out how many of you have have been here for that for that 21 years. 21 years. I think it's Brother Joe. Only Brother Joe, because I've been here. We've been here 20 years. Uh, yeah, about 20 years too, right? 2001, yeah, we've been here since 2001, uh, but Brother Joe has been here since NHICC uh, was a baby, amen, and so we, ha we have an, I don't want to say old timer, but we have one of the pioneers of the church here still, and we're so thankful to the Lord for his faithfulness. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we need to acknowledge uh, God's faithfulness through Brother Joe's and Sister SP's lives. Amen. Lives. Can, can we just give them a round of applause and thank them for the faithful years that they have been with us in the church. Amen. I know many of you have been here uh, 15 years and over. Some of you 10 years and over. Some of you 5 years and over. Some of you um, one year and over. Some of you are not yet here. You need to be here. <laughs> amen. They need to join the family of God. Amen. amen. Well, this morning as I was meditating on this verse, the Lord has just started to remind me that, you know, in that, in that, through that 21 years of, of our existence, he has transformed lives through the church and in the church. He has miraculously healed sick bodies how many of you have been healed by the Lord miraculously while you are in the church, since, since you came to the church? Miraculous healings. Amen? Amen, Brother Ron, is that powerful healing. God also comforted those who have, have grieved through the loss of a loved one. Um, he, he was there, the Holy Spirit has been with us. Many of us have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with power. Amen? Um, and many believers have been matured uh, to fruitfulness in ministry. Uh, he has provided and called people from the church supernaturally to go or to support missionaries. Amen? He has carried us through this pandemic. God is good. God is good. And so much more. God has done a lot of things in our midst, and he has not done yet. Yeah. He's not done yet, amen? The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Yeah. I believe that should Jesus tarry, he is going to do some, some more things, some more mir miracles through each and every one of us. Tell the person beside you, that means you. So we thank you, Lord, for your overflowing goodness, unending mercy, and unconditional and compelling love. Our theme this year is compelled. Amen? And our speaker, our guest speaker, is going to address that, that topic 
Um, and incidentally, when we were praying of who to, who to invite as a guest speaker, we, we started to think, to think, oh, we can invite anybody because we're going to be online, right? And we were planning. And so we, we were not even having the idea of, of having a, an outdoor service back then. And so we, we were praying. I, I, I know you, 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 you all were aware that back in about March, uh, I've set out a prayer request in the church for a gentleman by the name of uh, Greg Mundus. Uh, Pastor Greg Mundus is the executive director for world missions of the Assemblies of God. He used to be, he was formerly a missionary in Europe and in, in uh, Eurasia, uh, but the Lord has uh, picked him from that position and raised him up in the leadership of, of the whole missions, uh, world missions program of the Assemblies of God. In March, when COVID hit, he was hit and his wife too. Uh, but uh, Pastor Greg really hit, was hit hard. And he was um, hospitalized. He was in ICU uh, intensive care for two months. He coded three times. He, um, it was too late when they gave him the uh, hydroxy, uh, hydroxychloroquine uh, that the infection has already set in too much inside of his lungs and some of his uh, internal organs. But because we prayed, because the church prayed, because many other churches, as we joined all together to pray for him, God raised him up. God miraculously transformed that, that infection and, and reverted it back, and now he's healed. Amen? And so when we were praying uh, for who to, on, on who to, to invite to speak to us and address us today, we said, we'll invite Dr. Mundus. Amen. And so uh, he, these are going to be a, a, a series of videos. The first one will be his testimony, just, just a brief testimony and thank you for all those who prayed and then followed by his message. Get ready, get your ears open, get your hearts cultivated today as he speaks. I previewed his message and I know it's going to be powerful and I know it's going to speak to each and every one of you. Amen. God bless you as you listen. Hi, everyone. I'm sitting home with my wife, Sandy, here in Springfield, Missouri, celebrating life. After an incredible bout with COVID-19, intubated and in a coma for over 30 days, at death's door three times, in isolation for another 30 days, and having survived double viral lung infection, being on dialysis several times, fighting infections and blood clots, all that to say, I want to thank all of you who stood with me and my wife, Sandy, here at Hashtag Rally Hope. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers and your posts. I too survived COVID-19 and I'm very grateful for all of you. How can we ever thank you, thousands of you, so many of you that we don't even know who pray diligently for us. We are deeply grateful for all of you, but we're also both, both of us, very thankful for our two children and our eight grandchildren that rallied behind us and never gave up hope. So true. We also want to thank our sisters yeah, and their spouses. That's true. As well as our extended family. And in that regard, a special thanks to our son, Greg Jr., that created the Facebook page that posted our journey to health. It was not only about our journey, of course, but the journey of many others fighting COVID-19. That's what I loved about the Facebook post. It's not only about us, it's about thousands of people here in the United States and around the world that are fighting COVID-19. Just to let you know, I am in outpatient rehab and I'm making progress. Thank you again for your expressions, your thoughts, and your prayers. So, yes. let's, let's continue, continue to, to rally, rally hope, hope together. together. Greetings, Pastor Eric and congregation. I'm so thankful for the invitation to be able to address you at this missions and your celebration. And I pray that this message will be from the heart of God for you all. I'd like to start off in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, when it says, 
For when I preach the gospel, this is Paul speaking, I cannot boast since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Now, let me just stop there just one second because I want to talk about compelled. Compelled means to drive or urge forcefully or irresistibly. And synonyms could include obligated, obliged, pressured, or constrained. The phrase, I am compelled, in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, could also be translated, I am under compulsion. Related to the Greek word for arm, it conveys the image of a bent, uplifted arm poised to meet a pressing need or provide a timely help. To further understand Paul's meaning, consider two other scriptures. First, Acts chapter 4, verse 20. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Let me describe that context just a little bit. Peter and John defied the threats of the Sanhedrin, the religious body, and refused to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. As witnesses to Jesus' life and resurrection and recipients of the Holy Spirit baptism, they had an overwhelming desire to proclaim Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah. And throughout the book of Acts, the Spirit inspired, enabled, and compelled believers to share the gospel. You can read through the whole book and see that. The second scripture I want to mention is Romans chapter 1, verse 14. Paul, again writing, says, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to wise and the foolish. I'm glad that it was to Greeks and non-Greeks because I'm not Greek. Well, look, look at the Greek word here uh, that is translated in English as obligated. It is actually the word used for debtor, here to describe a sense of obligation. He is compelled to share the gospel, not because someone is forcing him, but rather out of love. It's much like the servant that is described in Exodus chapter 21, who chooses to remain with his master for life. He doesn't have to, he's been freed, but he chooses to stay. It reminds me of the old chorus from the 1970s, he paid a debt he did not owe, and I owe a debt I could not pay. As believers, we are compelled to share the good news because of all that Jesus has done for us. And as Pentecostals in particular, we are mobilized by the baptism of the Spirit to go into all the world and preach the gospel, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. So let me address four points for us today as we talk about missions. First, we have a universal obligation to send or be sent. There was a large gathering in Lausanne, Switzerland, and it was from, uh, from evangelicals from around the world, and they came up with this statement. Evangelization requires the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. I love that. Whole church, whole gospel, whole world. Let me share just a brief missions uh, history for you. In 1792, William Carey published a little booklet, and the title is this, An Inquiry into the Obligation of Christians to Use Means for the Conversion of the Heathens. Now, kind of a catchy title. Actually, that title, I think, was longer than the booklet. Up until then, the global church, the Protestant church, had been more or less dormant in regard to missions and was doing very little to reach lost people. A new paradigm was needed. Carey, a cobbler by trade, kind of like a shoe salesman, challenged established Christianity to understand what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 1 about his and every believer's obligation to go. Now, you can fast forward about 50 years. In 1846, across the ocean in America, Adoriam Judson said, let me now submit that the command, that is, the Great Commission, can be obeyed by every believer, that it is of universal obligation. Many years earlier, he had written in a magazine an article, and here's what he said. How do Christians discharge the trust committed to them? 
They let three-fourths of the world sleep the sleep of death, ignorant of the simple truth that a Savior died for them, content if they can be useful in a little circle of their acquaintances, they quietly sit and see whole nations perish, perish for lack of knowledge. Wow, what a difficult statement to preach. After Judson's call to missions, which he received in the northeast part of the United States, he fell in love with a lady by the name of Anne Hazeltine. And as, it was, as was the custom in that day, he, he wanted to ask for her hand in marriage from her father. But because of proximity and geography, he had to write to her. So he wrote this letter, and I read just a portion of it. I have now to ask whether you consent to part with your daughter early next spring, to see her no more in this world, whether you can consent for her departure to a heathen land and her subjection to the hardships and sufferings of missionary life, whether you can consent to her exposure to the dangers of the ocean, to the fatal influence and southern climate of India, to every kind of want and distress, to degradation, insult, persecution, and perhaps even violent death. Can you consent to this for the sake of him who left his heavenly home and died for her and for you, for the sake of perishing immortal souls, for the sake of Zion and the glory of God. As a father of a daughter, I mean, those words just really pierce my heart. Interesting, in 1810, before they left, Anne wrote this, his potential wife, uh, in a letter. She said, Jesus is faithful. Gee, I love that. His promises are precious. Were it not for these considerations, I should, with my present prospects, sink down in despair, especially as no female has, to my knowledge, ever left the shores of America to spend her life among the heathen. Nor do I yet know that I shall have a single female companion. But God is my witness that I have not dared to decline the offer that has been made me though so many are ready to call it a romantic, wild adventure or undertaking. Just for the history records, Adoriam learned the Burmese language along with Anne. They both translated the Bible that is still used 200 years later into the Burmese language. Anne died during her first term. Wow. Our universal obligation becomes even more profound as we let Scripture sink deep into our spirit, our soul, our heart, and our mind. As Peter wrote, the Lord is not slow concerning his promise as some regard slowness, but is being patient toward you because he does not want or wish for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That brings us to the second point. We have a unique obligation to send or be sent. Let's turn to Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. This is what it says. While I, uh, he was with them, he declared, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait there for what my father promised, which you heard about from me. For John baptized, with you, baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Melvin Hodges was an Assemblies of God world missionary and leader and said this, the Holy Spirit is a missionary spirit. Let me take you back one more time in history to Henry Martin, who was a pioneer missionary to Muslims in India and Persia in the early 1800s. He learned the Hindustani language and translated the Bible into Hindustani. He got very sick, very fever-stricken, and had to be had to be exported over to uh, Iran. There he learned Farsi and translated the Bible into Farsi. Here's what he said about the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. He said, the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of missions. And the nearer we get to him, to Jesus, the more intensely missionary we become. What a powerful statement for Pentecostals. As Pentecostals, the baptism of the Holy Spirit mobilizes and equips us to be his witnesses. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This power is not a privilege. 
It is a responsibility. And with that responsibility comes accountability. Church history includes several turning points that brought us to our current view of missions. The first was the Reformation, which began in 1517 with Martin Luther's response to a self, self-absorbed self corruption in the church world. The so-called Age of Enlightenment came along and the church leaders remained divided, embracing on exclusive and territorial parish mentality. That is, until William Carey, the shoe salesman, came along and initiated the next turning point in 1792 when he exhorted churches to open their eyes and see the lost souls of the world. And the great era of missions began. The third turning point in history, in church history, in regard to the uh, missions, I believe, is the outpouring of the Spirit at the turn of the 20th century. It not only opened believers' eyes to the world's need for a Savior, but also gave the church the power and the resources to take the gospel to every nation. In fact, in the early 1900s, there were just a handful of Pentecostal believers. But if you look at the records now in 2020, there are about 500 million Pentecostal charismatics in the world. This remarkable result, or this power, is that when few people were ba- a few people were baptized in the Spirit in the early 1900s, today that reaches across the world in this Pentecostal charismatic movement. Praise God. Hey, I, I need to tell you a little story about being compelled and the Holy Spirit compelling us. It's a, a story actually about when I was on an airplane. I was traveling from Zurich, Switzerland to Chicago, Illinois, and this happened a few years ago. I was uh, back in uh, row uh, 20 on the aisle, and next to me was a vacant seat. So I had been in ministry in Europe and was kind of tired and kind of was just gelling there and just, you know, kind of looking at people as they walked down the aisle. I wasn't profiling, but as they walked down the aisle, I just kind of wondered who was going to sit next to me. And so uh, a group of Americans came in. I knew they were Americans because I speak the language. And uh, they had just been in uh, Salzburg, Austria and they had seen the sound of music. Well, all they did was chatter about the sound of music. So I thought to myself, if one of them sits beside me for the next nine or 10 hours, I'm gonna hear about the sound of music. Well, my problem was I lived in Salzburg for five years and I had the sound of music up to my nose. Didn't want any more of it. So as they came in, they walked by me and I just lifted my head, folded my hands and said, thank you, Jesus. And then some more people came in And then this really big man, a huge man, came in. Now, you have to understand when I say huge, I'm just about six foot four and weigh an eighth of a ton. So I understand big, but he was so big, his shoulders were so broad, and he started walking down the aisle. And I thought, if he sits in that window seat, I'm going to be out in the aisle like this, and who knows how long that's going to last before I get hit with a cart or something. But he walked by, and I folded my hands, lifted my head, and said, thank you, Jesus. And then, then... just when I thought everything was going to be okay and I was going to have an empty seat, at the last second, this young lady jumped on the plane. She had the hair the color of the rainbow, black boots, black pants, black jacket, black lips. She had uh, nose rings up and down the nose, ring, uh, mouth rings all around the mouth, earrings all up and down, rings on her fingers and rings on places I don't even want to know about. So she comes and taps me on the shoulder. and. I looked at her and I said, yeah, I know, it's your seat, (laughs) and it was. And so I was kind of thinking, boy, you know, you took away that little space from me, and then I was convicted in my heart, and I was compelled to share with her the gospel. But I thought, how in the world am I going to share the gospel with her? I'm a man, she's a woman. I'm obviously, at that time, I'm in my 50s. She's maybe a late teenager, early 20s. Uh, I'm a liberal, she's a conservative. No, I mean, I'm a conservative, she's probably liberal. And, you know, we have all these worlds between us. So I just started off, I said, where are you going? And she said, I'm going to Kansas City, Missouri. Well, that really threw me off, because I figured, why would a girl from Zurich, Switzerland, want to go to Kansas City, Missouri? No offense to those from Kansas City, Missouri. And she said, I want to go to the IHOP. Well, in my head, all I had was International House of Pancakes, okay? So uh, I said, oh, you like pancakes? (laughs) This is all happening in the German language. And so uh, she goes, what are you talking about? 
I said, well, you like breakfast. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, what are you talking about? And we kind of go back and forth a little bit. And then she says, stop, stop, stop. Listen, two months ago, I'm out on the streets of Zurich. I'm doing drugs. I'm, uh, I'm living an a, a awful lifestyle. I have no purpose in life. My parents wanted me to go to university, but I didn't want to go because I just don't have purpose. And as I was just kind of standing on a corner, a bunch of people my age came up, hands me this piece of paper, and it talks about this man, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And I'd never even heard of him before. And so they said, come with us, and we had coffee, and they told me he was an actual person in history, that he was the only son of God, that he can come into your life and give you purpose, he can forgive everything and make you a new creation. Well, I was so fascinated, I said, what the heck, I'm going to try this. So I did, and all, the things start, all, all of a sudden things started changing in my life, and so I got online, and uh, I started uh, searching where I could go to really find purpose in my life, and I found this spot in Kansas City, Missouri, the IHOP, the International House of Prayer. I said, what? She goes, yeah, 24 hours they pray. I'm going to go there and spend a month. I got a visa, and I'm just going to pray. Long pause. Then she points her finger at me and says, sir, you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. What an illustration about being compelled to share the gospel. Here I am, decades a believer in Jesus Christ, and here she is just two months as a, a member of the family of God, and yet she is compelled by the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, our history is filled with stories of like that, and this present day is filled like that. Well, I want to move on to point number three. We have an utmost obligation to send or be sent. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, For since I am free from all, I can make myself a slave to all in order to gain even more people. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to gain the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, to gain those under the law. To those free from the law, I became like one free from the law, though I am not free from God's law, but under the law of Christ, to gain those free from the law. To the weak, I became weak in order to gain the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all means I may save some. I do these things because of the gospel that I can participate in it. Wow. Can I just do a quick comparison? Whole church, whole gospel, whole world. And then Paul says, all things, all people, all means. We're, there's no exclusions there. We need to do absolutely everything because we are compelled. Well, how do we get to this level of being compelled to share the gospel? Do we reason our way there? Do we map out some sort of discipleship strategy? Do we debate the pros and cons of it? Or do we simply surrender? Absolutely, irrevocably surrender our will to Jesus. You see, fresh vision comes when we surrender to him. Fresh passion comes when we sur surrender to him. Fresh empowerment from the Spirit comes when we surrender to him. We begin to see the world through different lenses. You see, the Pentecostal experience, without the Great Commission commitment, leads to excess and self-absorption. <laughs> let, uh, let me tell you a little story about a grandma in Kenya. Her name is Maria. She lived in the capital city of uh, Nairobi. Now, she began praying, and she did a lot of praying, and uh, she found out there was an unreached people group in northern Kenya. Well, an unreached people group is uh, a group of people that have common language and culture and perhaps even geography, not necessarily, but perhaps, a and, and they don't have a church, a viable church, or viable numbers of believers to really share the gospel with them. So it's called unreached. So she began praying for these people. They're called the Rendili people. So she went to her pastor and said, Pastor, uh, I've been praying for the Rendili. They're, they're lost. I need to go as a missionary. <laughs> the pastor said, Grandma, you don't have a Bible school education. You don't have any cross-cultural experience. You don't know their language. You're elderly. 
it's better if you just pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to send workers. So she took her pastor's advice, went back home and started praying. At the same time, she started saving a little bit of the social security money that she got from the government of the Kenya. And when I say little, I really mean little. But she saved and saved. Finally, she had enough money to buy a one-way bus ticket up to northern Kenya. So she went back to her pastor and said, Pastor, uh, I feel I am compelled to go. I am obligated to go. God has put this on my heart, and if I don't go, I'll be disobedient. So the pastor said, okay, I pray for you and bless you in the name of Jesus. So she went up there. She found a place to stay in a little village, and she tried to make friends. It was very difficult going. One morning, she woke up to a great commotion in the middle of the city, or city is a little too much to say, in the village. And uh, here was the witch doctor in the middle of the village, and people were gathered in a crowd around them, yelling at him, swearing at him, and hitting him and throwing dust at him from the, from the ground. And she asked somebody, what's going on? And she said, well, somebody, brought, somebody was brought to him last week that was sick, and he did his incantations and everything, and they died. Well, somebody was brought to him uh, like yesterday, and um, he, was, he was fairly okay, but now he's in his hut dying. So this little grandma lady goes into the hut, kneels down, and prays over this sick person. And God, in his mercy and his grace, heals that person. So they both walk out of the hut. The witch doctor's eyes get about that big. People turn around. They're going, what is happening here? The chief comes up, says, what is going on? And she gets to tell the whole village about Jesus. The chief is so impressed, he gives her a little plot of land. So she builds a little hut on it, and pretty soon it starts spreading around. She writes a letter to her pastor, and basically it's one word, help! What had happened is people started coming, and she didn't know how to handle all the people that were coming to know Jesus. So he went to the Bible school there in Nairobi, where it was, uh, the leader was an Assemblies of God missionary. He gathered up about 50 students. They drove up there in several buses, started evangelizing that whole tribe of the Rendili. And many of them became, became Christians, and the church was established there. And that unreached people group was taken off the list of unreached peoples because Grandma prayed. Sometimes we're compelled to just even pray. But we always have to be prepared to send or be sent. And that brings me to the fourth point. We have an urgent obligation to send or be sent. John chapter 9, verse 4 says this, We must perform the deeds of the one who sent me as long as it is daytime. Night is coming when no one can work. <laughs> I heard this little story about a couple of ministers that were standing by the side of the road holding up a sign. The end is near. Turn around before it's too late. I'm sure that maybe in your walking in uh, cities, you've seen people like this. And uh, a man came by in his car, rolled down the window, actually hit the button and the window came down. And he said, leave us alone, you religious nuts. So he sped by them then. From around the curve, the two preachers heard screeching, tires, and a big crash. So one minister said to the other one, do you think we should just put up a sign that says bridge out instead? Yeah, I think so. The fact of the matter is Jesus came the first time to fulfill a promise. And he made a promise that he would come a second time. And Jesus keeps his promises. So since the earliest 20th century, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecostals have had an urgent eschatology. That means they believe that Jesus is coming back. This simply means that they anticipated the return of Christ just as he promised. Throughout the centuries, the message of 2 Peter chapter 3 is so very applicable. Let me read just a portion of this for you. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come 
scoffing and following their own evil desires, and they will say, where is this coming he promised? So let me reemphasize, Jesus fulfilled a promise by coming the first time. Galatians 4.4 4 says, in the fullness of time, he came. And he prophesied in the Gospels and in the epistles that he would come again. And I think we as Pentecostals need to understand that and have this urgency about sharing the Gospel, this compelling about sharing the Gospel. You know, one of the interesting things about the outpouring of the uh, Holy Spirit at the beginning of the 20th century, Pentecostal missionaries were sent out, and they were known as the people of the one-way ticket, kind of like Grandma from Kenya. They expected to either die in the country of their calling or to be caught up away by the Lord, or what we say today, raptured. Wow. That's a obligation that is compelling in our spirit. So over the last 100 years, Christianity has grown and spread, shifting from the global north to the global south, and the Spirit has been outpoured in unprecedented measure. So what is the Spirit saying to us now? What direction is he giving Pentecostals, both individually and corporately, on a macro scale, on a micro scale, for the church in general and for the church local? What is he saying to our movement? What is he saying to your church? There are the questions we must ask ourselves as we complete the Great Commission in whatever time we remain until Jesus returns. Remember, there are four billion people on the face of the planet Earth that have never truly heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And every day, there's a line of people marching to the precipice of hell unless someone goes and tells them. I am compelled by a universal vision to reach the whole world for Christ. I am compelled by my unique relationship with Jesus and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I am compelled to give my utmost, my everything, to the Lord. I am compelled to have a sense of urgency to share the gospel. May I ask you, are you compelled to send or be sent? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Greg, for that wonderful message. I really like the line that he said, fresh vision, fresh passion, and fresh empowerment is derived through fresh surrender. Amen. Pastor Greg asked us a question at the end of his message. Are you compelled to send or be sent? For many years now, the Lord has led the church to use missions theme for our anniversary. I'm not sure if you have um, taken notice of this, but the theme that we use for our missions convention is ca carried over to our anniversary so that the next year we will be focusing on that theme uh, where we were focusing on, that we were focusing on on missions. And for so many years, the Lord has been speaking to our hearts. And today, as we face this global pandemic, as we face this turbulent times politically in our nation, the message has never changed. Amen? The message has never changed. The methodology may change, but the love of Jesus and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is still available to the church. His love compels us. And so tonight, before as we close this part of the message, I'd like to give out a fresh challenge to each and every one of us here. 
do we need fresh vision? Do we need fresh passion? Do we need a fresh empowerment of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our personal lives? To reach out to those who need the Lord. To reach out to our neighbors. He already has equipped us with boxes of food for the next seven weeks to reach out, to use, to reach out to our neighbors. Unlike the missionaries that of, the, of old, that they had to buy just one-way ticket. All we have to do is bring the boxes and tell them that Jesus loves them. But if we don't have that passion and that vision inside of our hearts to see souls saved and transformed, empowered, and then the, the whole cycle comes, comes, comes in where they go and, set and tell others, just like that young girl with that nose, those nose rings and, and rainbow-colored hair. The transforming power of Jesus is still available. Amen? He's still in the business of changing and transforming lives. I'm pretty sure when God allows us to get back into the church, there will be vacant seats in that place that needs to be filled. In fact, there are some vacant seats here that needs to be filled. This coming 2021, as we turn 21 today, would you commit yourself afresh? Would you surrender yourself afresh tonight to the Lord that He can use you? Perhaps in a way that you, can, you have never imagined He can use you. Just like that old lady who went down to Africa. And she just prayed. And that person was healed. And the Lord used that as a spark. So that one unreached people group would be taken off that record, that statistic. Because they have been reached with the gospel of Jesus. Bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray tonight. And I have been praying. I said, God, give us a fresh passion for souls. Give us a fresh vision, God. Give us a fresh empowerment. Lord, this, this 21st anniversary, Lord, we don't allow us to get sidetracked, Lord, by, by the issues and the political conditions that are around us right now. Help us, Lord, not to lose focus on what you want us to focus on. The Great Commission, the reaching out, touching lives with the love of Jesus. Tonight, if the Holy Spirit has spoken to you through the message, and you would like to respond, I know we cannot call anybody up at the altars but you can stand up wherever you're at. You can respond personally to the Lord. And if you want to do so, I'd like to invite you to stand up wherever you're at right now and say, God, I need a fresh surrender. Lord, I surrender my life afresh to you. Lord, this, this past 21 years in the church, you have been faithful. You have been so good. You have been so kind. You have been overflowing us with blessings and favor. Tonight, Lord, I'd like to offer myself afresh to you, to your cause. To send or be sent. If you'd like to make that response tonight, would you stand up wherever you're at and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Jesus, use me in whatever way you can. Lord, don't refuse me, for surely there's a work that I can do. And even though it's humble, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the cost be great, I'll work for you. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who are responding. I will not prolong the challenge. I will not prolong the invitation. If, if you need to surrender 
your life afresh to Jesus and say, God, help me refocus my, my purpose. Help me re refocus my purpose. Help me be compelled by your love to reach out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you see these that are standing, Lord, tonight. You see their hearts. You see their, their dedication, Lord, right now. They see, you see their commitments, Lord. I just lift them up to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Would you touch these? Would you open doors of opportunities for them? Would you pour out the, uh, your, your Holy Spirit in a fresh and new way upon each and every one of us, Lord? But especially upon these that are standing. Lord, open new doors that they had never imagined you would open for them. Bring them, Lord, to, to fields of endeavor, so God where you can use them to glorify your name and touch souls and bring them to a saving knowledge and, a, and the regeneration power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We submit ourselves to you tonight. We dedicate ourselves to you afresh and anew. Help us to be compelled by your love this coming year, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Yes, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite our beloved sister, Rika Joy, to come and share a song number to us. God provides, so why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice, it is a lie. God provides, God provides, in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, he multiplies. Just when I feel he won't show up on time, God provides. He'll come through when the clouds of doubt rain down on you and test everything you thought. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. God provide. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat Or what you see feels all that life will be And will this be another year of misery for me? But my faith can't survive on just things I see and my feelings can't control my destiny. See, God, I only want what you believe for me. So tonight, close your eyes. There's no more need to fight. Ooh, watch God provide. You will provide before your eyes. Oh, oh, you will, you will. So tonight, 
close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. He will provide. Before you. Watch God provide. Hallelujah, church. Give him a clap of praise. Amen. God provides. Amen. God provides indeed. Whew. Powerful song. Amen. Well, it's offering time, so if you have your, um, I know when you came in, uh, the folders were uh, g given to you with your questionnaires. Together with that folder is your offering envelope, so on your way out, uh, make sure that you drop it to our uh, offering box over that side. And then uh, don't forget to uh, bless each one of us uh, with a smile because it's our 21st anniversary. Yay! <laughs> Amen. And then also, please be reminded uh, to our uh, schedule for this week, uh, all the, the giving. Uh, you could also use the QR code. If you can't uh, give today, you could just um, uh, pay online by and or visit our website, uh, nhiccag.org, or just drop it off right now. So you just have to, uh, don't have to worry about it. So, but if you don't have your checks with you, use the QR code. Okay. At the same time, our announcements for the week, there will be no, um, uh, I don't know, um, pray, uh, there will be prayer meeting from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but since Thursday is Thanksgiving um, night, we won't be having our prayer meeting, but still for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there would be prayer meetings this week. So join us online at 8 o'clock, and uh, the code would be texted in our uh, NHICC uh, Facebook Messenger group. All right, and then at the same time, all the Bible studies, preteens, youth, scheduled for this week, please check with your um, pastor or your Bible study group if you will have one. Uh, make sure uh, you are aware of the time and um, people that you have to talk to, okay? Also, ministry team, uh, the board, the pastors, and all the ministry coordinators, uh, please save the date, December 5th. We will be meeting here. Uh, breakfast meeting at 9.30 in the morning to plan out for our 2021 um, calendar, all right? So it's that time of the year, right? So please save that date. All the ministry coordinators, I've texted you this week, um, 9.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock breakfast, then 9.30, we'll try to finish before lunch, okay? So uh, so you could do the rest of the day with uh, the things that you need to do, amen? All right, Pastor Eric, can you close us in prayer? This is a very unique anniversary. We never had one like this before. Hallelujah. So this is the first. Amen. Hopefully this is the last two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, shall we all stand as we close in prayer tonight? Um, we, have, we have prepared uh, a, just a token. I know usually during anniversaries we have, we have a meal. We, we uh, lavishly... <laughs> feed our spirits and our bodies, bodies. Uh, but you know, due to due to the rules and the uh, the uh, limitations that we have in, in meeting together as a church, we um, thought of a souvenir uh, that you could take home with you. Uh, we have pies uh, that you could take home. And so, uh, Pastor Ricky will give us instructions after the closing prayer, uh, uh, and also. Our yearbook is here. 
Our 20th year yearbook is here on our 21st year. Hallelujah. So it's a double purpose. We thank God for the awesome work of Pastor Amy, Pastor Ricky, um, who else? Eva. Eva and Michelle. Thank you so much for your hard work. We know it was a struggle, you know, working with uh, the press and, and everything in the pandemic. But thank God it, it came out and it's really good. I know you will be blessed. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for the 21 years of faithfulness that you have shown us. Lord, and we are assured that as faithful as you have been in the past, so faithful you will be in the future. Lord, we know that uh, the signs of the times are, are letting us know that your soon return is here. Lord, help us, Lord, to respond to that message and that challenge, Lord, that Pastor Greg gave us, Lord, tonight. Help us, Lord. And we pray, God, that this coming, this coming year... Lord, it will be a year of harvest. It will be a year, Lord, of dedication. It will be a year of commitment. It will be a year of infilling of the Holy Spirit. It will be a year of transformation and growth, O oh God. As you compel us with your love, Lord, to reach out to our neighbors. Thank you, Lord. I just pray a special blessing to be upon your people, Lord, tonight. The Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we declare. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. Oh, I wish, I wish I could hug you, but maybe an elbow will be fine. Uh, and so please be seated. Pastor Ricky is going to come. And give us uh, directions on how we can pick up our pies in our yearbook. We see righteousness and praise rising up throughout the earth, the saints of God, a pure and spotless bride clothed in white, full of faith, head lifted high, and we declare that you Children of God. 
Kamusta po? Ano yan? Ayun na po, nakuha niyo na.